In the last video, we stopped at this step where we are trying to post a goods receipt for the purchase order that we created together. And then first we got an error related to material ledger that we solved in the last video. And now we have this other error, check table 169P. Welcome to another video in the SAP configuration from zero playlist, where we start our configuration from zero on SAP s hana And our objective is to run a complete procure to pay process, including purchase orders, goods receipt, and invoice receipt. Before we continue with this error, let's first review where we are in the playlist. So I will go to my website, www.galatconsulting.com slash courses. Then here from the menu, if you go here to the courses menu, you can find the SAP configuration course. And if you scroll down, you are going to find a diagram showing all the videos that we explained so far in this playlist. So we started with the company code, then global parameters, purchase organization, plant, storage location, and so on. Always follow this diagram in order not to lose your way throughout the playlist. Any video that is in yellow means that it is a mandatory video and things that are in blue are deep dive videos that I connected from the other videos I created on the channel because this playlist is going to combine everything together. So always follow this diagram. Now let's go back to our SAP system and continue with this error. So first I will display the long text for the error and see if it says anything or if there is any configuration connected. So we don't have any customizing activity connected to this error message and it doesn't really explain a lot of things. Only in table 169p, the entry AG60 is missing. My first move when I get an error like this is to go to Google and look for it. What my other move is also to take this table name and look for it on the system and see what is inside. So I will copy this table name or table code and then now to display any table, we go to the transaction SE16N. So slash O to open a new screen, SE16N or SE16H, both of them will work. And here I will insert the table name. So 169P, if you insert 169P, you will get a message that you don't, there is no table with this name. So you just add a T before. This is a trick you learn with time. So if you get any table name that doesn't work for you, just add a T and see if it will work. Sometimes it wouldn't work anyway, but sometimes it does. So now I just add a T, enter, and we get this table. So it is something related to invoice verification. This is a configuration table. It has parameters. So if we would like to see what's inside, we can just execute. And you see it has a lot of fields related to many things. We can double click on any line to see, so we have notification of PO text, automatic email, stochastic block. This is something related to invoice verification and so on. So a lot of details inside. And if I look for my company code, AG60, it does not exist here. So we have not added our company code to this table. This is why we are getting this error. Now I would like to modify this table. I do not know where the configuration activity is. So again, we can just go and look on Google and see if anyone has talked about this table in any of the threads, questions, blogs, or so on. And you are going to find a lot of people have discussed this table already. Or the other move that is something that we can do on our own is go to transaction SM30. So this is the transaction we use to maintain tables. Now, since this table has a maintenance view, remember the message that we got when we started the transaction, this table has a maintenance view, meaning that we can maintain it. So we can go to slash OSM30. If the maintenance view is activated and is working fine, you will be able to edit the table directly from here. So T169P, and then you just click on edit. And you see, you can just add a line for the company code here, but we don't really understand what's inside. So you can just right click on the fields and read the help documentation to understand what these fields mean. Maybe you can, if you are in a rush and you just want to test your process, then you copy the standard uh, 0001 company code. So this is a standard company code. You just copy the entry and you put your own company code, but then you don't really understand what this configuration does. If you'd like to analyze more, then go to each field and use F1. Or there is one more move I'm going to teach you that you now that I have not shown you before. And this move is to click on customizing here. And this will show you every sub menu in the configuration where this table is mentioned. So here, this table is used in a lot of configuration activities, 
Most of them related to Registrix invoice verification. You see this? We have something related to valuation and account assignment, and our company code does not exist in any of them. So now I'll just check these and see if any of them looks interesting to me. So configure price change in previous period, not something that I would like to do now. Set check for duplicate invoices, maybe. Define configure on plan delivery costs are posted. Activate item amount check. So I will just pick any of them and add my company code there and see if this will allow me to proceed. So let's, for example, take the one for the duplicate invoices. So I'll just double click on the line. It will open the configuration menu. And this will allow us to see where the, co the configuration is maintained, right? So we are inside material management, logistics invoice verification, incoming invoice. And here we have activate scenario for invoice verification, set check for duplicate invoices. So I'm just going to maintain a line here. So would you like to do a duplicate invoice check? If you don't know what this is and you would like to understand, so dive deeper into the details. So you should read the documentation first and then proceed with the configuration activity. What I will do now is I'm going to copy this line. Okay, and our company code AG60. And I'll just proceed. I will leave it to you if you would like to learn more about this to come to the screen and read about the different fields from the help. Okay, now save, load it to a transport request. Okay, and let's go back. So now we have maintained our company code in the table for one of the configuration activities. Let's go to our goods receipt. And from here, let's try to post it again. So check. We don't have any errors if we check and then click on post. And the error is gone. So now we have added our company code to table T169P. I believe this was the name. And we don't have the error. As usual, always document all the configuration activities you do. If I look into my configuration document, I already have steps for table T169P. So the reason I have them is because I faced this error before, I documented it, I documented the solution with additional details explaining why we do this. So this is very important. So now we have configured the invoice verification parameters needed to add, proceed with our process. We did not configure everything, but we have done what allows us to proceed. Now we have another error, maintain tolerance limits for tolerance key VP. I think I'm going to continue with this error also in the same video because now it will be very short. We are almost at, we are only at eight minutes maybe. So let's continue with this error also in the same video. So now tolerance limits for tolerance key VP. Let's go into the long text. Again, we follow the same steps to analyze an error. So the long text, first of all, this one has a customizing button activated. So we can go directly to the configuration. And here we have some information. It doesn't really explain much. I will leave it to you to read if you want. Now I will go to the configuration activity, continue, and see where this configuration activity is available in the configuration menu. So we have it in three places, either purchase order, invoice block, or goods receipt. We are posting a goods receipt now. So I believe it will be the one related to goods receipt. So let's go here. And we first explore where we are in the configuration menu. So we are under material management, inventory management, physical inventory, goods receipt, set to learn limit. First, we can read the documentation to understand what this is, and then we can execute the transaction. So if I look here for my company code, AG60, we don't have anything. And as you see, we have a lot of transaction keys here, our tolerance keys. What the one that we had in the error message is VP. Why we have it is because VP is for moving average price variance. And our material that we created together is maintained with moving average. So now SAP must have instructions on what to do when there is a huge difference between the moving average we have for the material and the moving average that's being posted and or the value that's being posted with the goods receipt. For example, if there is a material that has a moving average of 10, but now we are posting a goods receipt for the same material, but the value is 100, this is a huge difference, right? So maybe it indicates that the user inserted an additional zero in the purchase order price by mistake. And trust me, this happens. 
So the tolerance limit is very important. This is a way to prevent mistakes. So when we set the tolerance limit, if I look, for example, for the standard company code 0001 for VP, let's see what we have here. So double click on the line. So for VP 0001, we don't have any check for the lower limit, but for the upper limit, we have a check of 25%. So if my material has a value of 10, or moving average of 10, and I'm posting a goods receipt for a value of 100, then we have exceeded the 25% differences. Then we are going to get a message telling us that be careful, something is wrong here. This is all thanks to the configuration of our tolerance limit. So I would like to have this also for my company code. So I'm going to copy and I will insert here my company code AG60. So now we have maintained VP for AG60 and I've maintained the same tolerance limit, which is 25%. We can also deactivate this completely, but I do not recommend in real life. Of course, in your testing system, you can do whatever you want, but also I will leave it like this and maybe run a test or two with additional, like with a very big difference between moving average and the price. So I can see the message that will appear and so on. So now we will activate it with 25% difference, which means that the moving average price of the material cannot be exceeded by more than 25% when we are posting a goods receipt to limit mistakes in the purchase order creation, for example. Now I'm going to save and load it to a transport request. And now let's go back, back to our transaction for goods receipt. And let's see if we will get any other errors. So now, okay, and post. Tolerance limits for key VP, it's still asking for the same tolerance limit, which means that we need to restart the transaction to load the new configuration. Slash in MIGO again, and we insert our purchase order. So this allow slash in and then the transaction code again. This means that it's like I went out of the transaction and the back end. So now I reloaded the transaction. Okay, check. The document is okay. Now post. Account determination for entry AG00 is not possible. Congratulations, this, the error for the tolerance limit is done. Now we have the account determination errors. If you have already watched the account determination playlist, then you already know what this error is, what's the meaning of each single value that we have in the message, and you know how to solve this. If you have not watched the account determination playlist for material management, then I really recommend that you do. It's very important for MM consultants and FICO consultants. Anyway, in the next video, I will continue with you as we agreed in our basic procure to pay process and we will solve this error together to be able to proceed with the goods receipt. So what have we done in this video so far? First, we have solved the error for the table T169P. This is the parameters for invoice verification. So we have maintained our company code there. And then we have solved another error for the tolerance limit VP for goods receipt of moving average materials. Now your homework for today is to read about tolerance limits in SAP. It is a concept that's used in many places in the system. So we have tolerance limits in goods receipt, tolerance limit in invoice receipt and so on. So just go and look for tolerance limit in SAP s hana You will get the SAP help website. And also there are many blogs created by different contributors to the community. So go and read about the tolerance limit. The second thing you need to do is to follow the steps that we did in order to maintain the invoice verification parameters and also maintain the tolerance limits for the tolerance key VP for goods receipt. If you do not have access to an SAP S4HANA system to test this on your own, then you can subscribe to the same system I am using by going to my website, galalconsulting.com slash SAP access, or from the menu here, you can go to SAP access you will be able to subscribe online to the SAP server and you'll get a user ID within one day that will allow you to configure anything you want. Also, do not forget to check the diagram on the website for the SAP configuration from zero course to see what are the steps that we already explained and what are the steps that are coming after this one. I have a very good plan for this playlist and God's willing, I will be able to see it through. I hope you found the video useful and easy to understand. Do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, share the video with your connections, check the channel membership program to get access to the member exclusive videos. 
documents like the configuration document that I share here and also our Slack community where you can chat with me and the other members of the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.